So, I've managed nearly a 40 FPS jump with my settings, and the game looks pretty much the exact same. Alright, sweet, I'm happy with that. Hello, and welcome to WePC. My name's Jack, and I suck at Valorant. Just one of those games I genuinely suck at. But hey, you don't, and that's why you're here, right? Are you getting low FPS in Valorant? Stutters and lag holding you back? Well, despair no longer, my friend, because I'm going to show you my best optimised graphical settings for Valorant. Before we get into it, can I please ask that you subscribe and leave a like on the video, if you enjoyed it of course. Let's go. I knew very little about Valorant when I started playing for this video, but I must say it's pretty fun. I can see why it has over 14 million players worldwide. All of my teammates were very friendly and supportive. And I broke the record for the lowest KD ever seen. But that's not why we're here. I'm not here to sell you Valorant. I will however praise it for its amazing gameplay and incredibly already well optimised performance. But where there's settings, there's optimization to be had. So let's jump into the settings and take a look at what's going on. First up is display mode. You always want to make sure that this is set to full screen, as Windows prioritises the on top window, and we don't want performance impeded by any Windows resource optimizations. Such things can sometimes happen when using the window display mode. Resolution You always want to play at your monitor's native resolution, or lower. There's no point going any higher as you won't get any visual benefit. I play in 1440p, but my monitor is 4K. If you have the extra horsepower, you can play at higher resolutions, but a quicker way to gain massive performance is to drop a resolution. Like for me, it'd be 1440p to 1080p. Now, none of these limit FPS and max FPS settings matter for gameplay, with the exception of the bottom one, limit FPS always. You always 100% want to make sure this is turned off. This is your global FPS limiter. Unless you have a specific FPS target, you should always have this disabled. However, if you want to go the limiter route, V-Sync is always a better option. More on that later. Multi-threaded rendering. You naturally want this enabled, if you have a decent CPU with more than a few spare cores. However, if you do experience frame drops, turn this off. If your CPU is busy with other tasks, Multi-threaded rendering will result in slower rendering than single core rendering. Have a play and see what's best for you. Material quality I have set at medium. This is the middle ground and results in still very decent visuals while preserving a few frames. Texture quality is, well, exactly what it says on the tin. The quality of textures and governs the amount of polygons used to compose textures. Again, set this to medium. Detail quality governs things like decals and particle effects, and it can really hit a GPU hard if there's a lot going on. Crank it down to medium or lower if you have some frame drops with effects on screen. UI quality, we don't spend a huge amount of time looking at the UI, or well at least I don't, so short of disabling it completely, I'm going to set this to low to keep it from eating as few FPS as possible. Vignette is down to personal preference, it has no performance hit, so do what you please. V-Sync is off. Unless you want to limit your FPS to your monitor's native refresh rate, if you want to do that, that's fine, but for our purposes, we're going for as much FPS as possible, so turn it off. AA, or anti-aliasing, stays on multi-sample anti-aliasing, or MSAA. This is times two, just to keep the aliasing away. Anisotropic filtering is set to times four, to help with depth and lighting without being too impactful. Improved clarity I have set to on, just to help us as we lower some settings. Experimental sharpening is definitely set to off. Nothing good ever came from something with the word experimental or beta in it. Ask me about the 5600G experimental release BIOS, I, I dare you. What do you mean? Because it's trash! Bloom and distortion are image effects that don't affect performance in any measurable way. Not that I found anyway, so again, they're down to your preference. Cast shadows is something that can affect performance, but doesn't impede gameplay in any way for me. If you like shadows and want to embrace the sleep paralysis shadow people, then be my guest and leave this option enabled. But for me, I'm going for raw frames, so I'm going to turn it off. So, well, 
Aside from the terrible gameplay, that's pretty much it guys. The less Valorant gameplay I show you, the better. Please leave a like on the video if you enjoyed and subscribe if you want to see more of our great content. This has been Jack from WePC. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.